Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Hi Zach. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're actually gonna be doing a full tour of the camper. Um, we're gonna talk about the truck, talk about the camper, a little bit outside, inside. And then if you guys stick around to the end, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a few things that I like about the camper, a few things that I don't like, and a few things that I'm gonna change. But let's start out with the truck. So this is a 2017 Ford F350. It has a 6.7 liter diesel power stroke engine in it. The bed is a six foot 10 inch box, so it's a short box. So the camper actually hangs out a little bit, but we wanted it a little bit shorter, that way we're slightly more nimble. Um, it's kind of hard to drive around in parking lots and stuff like that as it is. We didn't want the extra length and we're okay with the camper hanging out the back a little bit. Now this truck is completely stock right now. The only thing that is different is that we have some BF Goodrich KO2 tires on it, which I've absolutely loved, but everything else is completely stock, exactly how you'd get it from the factory. We bought it about two years ago. It had about 80,000 miles on it. We currently have about 150,000 miles on it. And so far it's been great. We've had some really small issues that come with the mileage and everything like that. But for the most part, it's been an amazing truck. I have absolutely no complaints about it. Now this is a 2023 Scout Kenai, and this is exactly how you get it from the factory, except for this, it's a GoPro mount, and then these. These are Max Tracks. Um, I did not want to take them off for this video, so I left them on, but everything else is exactly how you'd get it. So starting from the side, some add-ons that we got were these bilateral bed runners. What they are is just a big hunk of metal that's bolted right to the bottom of the camper and it allows you to mount stuff right to the side. I think it's probably one of the most underrated features that you can add to yours. Now, if you don't plan on bolting a bunch of stuff to the side, that's fine, but it gives me a spot for my GoPro, it gives me a spot for these Max Tracks, which is amazing. And then I can keep adding stuff to it and not actually have to drill into the side of the camper. Now, if you look up top where you have a roof rack, that will run the entire width, doesn't run the entire length. But if we wanna add things like a rooftop tent later or something like that, it allows us to bolt things right to the top, just like these side ones where we don't have to worry about it. And one of the big reasons that we wanted to add the roof rack is someday I might want to make a ladder that goes from the bed runners up to the roof rack. That way I don't have to bolt anything actually into the camper. I can bolt it to the sides and it can come on and off. I want the least amount of holes in the side of this to where it can add like moisture and water and things like that. All right, so it's a little sunny in my face. I'm gonna squint a little bit, but right in front here, what we have is on top, we have 180, I believe 185 watt solar panel. And then right above it, it's a very thin strip is our LED light bar, and that will give us our yellow markers. I'd love to be able to hack it and maybe make it a normal LED bar and switch between the yellow markers and possibly like bright white or something like that because any extra light I can have on trails or anything would be amazing. But right now it's just yellow markers. On here, just like the other side, we have our bed runners, runs the entire length, pretty thick steel. And then this is our storage compartment. You have these two buttons, push them in, comes down, and then it comes up. And then in here, you have a bunch of storage space. You have a ladder to get up to top, and then you have just some tools for the camper itself. And then this is your propane. You have two 10 pound tanks of propane in here. And then right in the middle, you actually have a hookup for an external propane if you wanna do any cooking outside. Up top here is my Rhino Rack. It is a, uh, I think 270 degree awning. I have yet to take it out. I might take it out for this video. Um, I don't really know how to open it, but we'll see how it goes. And then back here, I think is the most interesting spot. So starting here, these are two two gallon Rotopax containers for water. I might add an extra one up here and run diesel fuel, um, gasoline, if I end up getting a generator, um, but that's for a later date. Up there, a big question people ask is what that's for. That's actually for the awning. It comes completely around and hooks into it. That way it holds it. There's a few other things that it does, um, but it's mostly for the awning. One of the biggest selling points of the Ford was actually this step here. What it does is it goes inside your tailgate and 
That way I don't have to bring like a step stool or anything like that. It just sits right inside where we're driving and then just pops out and then just a nice little step. Right here is for our toilet. Now this is a add-on, so not everyone is gonna have this, but we have the Thetford cassette toilet. So this is our water fill up. So you just get a hose, fill up your toilet that way, just like fill on the top of your toilet. And then right here is where all the poop goes. So all your poop goes in here, um, super easy to take out, comes out, dump it, and then it just goes back in. So far, I've really liked it. I have absolutely no complaints about it. The DC heater just has two latches on top, comes completely down. This is the heater itself. Um, this is your cold air in, exhaust out, and then these tubes are what goes in and out of the camper. I'll show you guys when we go inside that. And then this is just your diesel tank. You just fill it up really easy, just like when you're getting gas for the truck. All you do is just fill it up right here and it's extremely efficient. One thing I was really worried about getting it was how much diesel I was actually gonna go through. And I believe on high, it's only 0.24 gallons an hour which gets us about 50 to 60 hours of actual run time. And honestly, we're not running it nonstop because it's really strong, it's really warm. So it'll run for a little bit, off for an hour, run for a little bit, dep obviously depending on the weather. But so far, we've had it in pretty cold temperatures and it's definitely kept up. I have absolutely no complaints about it at all. And then this is just your porch light. It has a little solar panel on top to get the sun. And then it's like motion activated. So anytime you come out, if there's activity back here, it just turns on and off. All right, let's head inside and talk about the inside. So starting back here, this is a little cubby space. It has a rack up top that you can hang your clothes from. It has an adjustable drawer and it has a little cubby in the bottom. Right here is all of our water. So this is a lifesaver. I think it's about five gallons. What you do is like you pump it it adds pressure and then you have your little spout right here. And then this is our little sink. What it does is it flushes right out to the side of the camper. Now what you wanna do is you only wanna use water for that. If you're gonna be like collecting anything gross, you wanna actually collect it with like a bag. Um, or if you're doing water and like a biodegradable soap, you wanna be like 200 feet away from any water source that way you're not contaminating the water. And then moving on to the next thing is this is the Dometic stove. It opens up, these open up, and then you have a little stove top and all of your propane comes from the outside. Now the reason that it's so big and on top is that they designed it to where you can take it off this and bring it outside and hook it up to your propane outside and you can cook outside. For us, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this here. We're probably not gonna cook outside. And then this is your Dometic fridge freezer. Well, you have two sides. You can customize each side however you want it to be. So if you want two fridges, you can have two fridges. If you want one fridge, one freezer, it's completely fine. What it does is it plugs in your battery and then it runs off the battery so that you don't need to keep adding ice. In my experience, once it gets the temperature, it's extremely efficient we haven't had any issues with this running our battery down at all. This is the bed area. Now this is how it comes. I added these, I just didn't feel like taking them out. Um, I weigh 240 pounds and my body just crushes right through this foam. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Lindsay said that she really liked it, but I needed a little bit more cushion. So I just got these pads from REI, just adds a little bit of cushion. It also adds a little bit of warmth. And then one of the features that we added onto this is the portal edge bunk extensions that these slide out just like that. So what you can do is you can add these to it. It brings you out and then that just gives you a lot more space to sleep. When me and Lindsay did it, we put our heads that way and then we put our feet this way. That way it's way more comfortable. And then with these, what I can do is I can take them out and then slide them lengthwise. That way this pad is also completely covering you that way. 
I know a lot of people add things like called like the Froley system where it adds depth to you, but with the portal edge, that doesn't work because you'd have to like take them off and move them. We found that these two different pads have been the best possible scenario for us. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty comfortable, especially when you have it in this configuration, you don't get to cuddle. Lindsay hates it, but I'm not a cuddler. Anyway, but it adds a ton of space. That way you're not crowded. We were a little crowded when we didn't use these night one. Once we started using this, it was a lot better. And then up top here, we have an amazing skylight. Now we opted not to have the rooftop tent, where if you have the rooftop tent, this is how you get up into it. We'd rather have the skylight. Um, what you do is you just undo it. It opens up. It also has a blind like that. And then on this side, it has like a screen for bugs. If you're, it's nice out, you can open it up. Just like the skylight, um, these windows are essentially the same thing. They completely come out. And then up top, we have the blind. And then down here, we have the net. And what's nice about it is you can go in between blind and net. It like sticks together. That way you don't let any bugs in. Or if you want it completely open, it's just like that. Up here, we just have a bunch of hooks that we can hang things from. There's four of them. They're designed to be hooked with the portal edge. You hook right to it. Eventually, what we'll probably do is just add some bags up here that you can keep your clothes in and stuff like that. And then that leads us to the lounge area, which is a pretty good amount of seating. The table swivels around and it's a good size. What you can do is take this arm off and then put it down and rearrange these pads and it turns into another bed. So if you have three people or you have a kid or something like that, it's somewhere for them to sleep. And then that leads us to the back, which is where the diesel heater controls are. So this is your control panel for the diesel heater. Super easy to use. This is where the heat comes out of. And then in here is where the cold air comes back in. So it cycles through here heating everything up. And then right here we have a nice little shelf that covers up the toilet. And then you have your toilet right underneath it. Now the toilet is a little tight. I already said I'm 240 pounds. It's a little tight to get in there, but it works completely fine. What's nice about this toilet is that it actually flushes. So like I showed you guys on the outside, you fill it up with a garden hose and then it fills this tank. And then what you do is like you push this pump down, it fills the bowl with liquid and fluid and then when you're done you just pull a lever and it falls out into the tray that way you don't have any smells you don't have anything to deal with and it works honestly really good we were not expecting it to be as nice as it is and we're very happy with it what i'm standing on right now is the floor pan which actually has like a drain to it and leads to the outside so the scout comes with a shower curtain that hooks to these and then you can take a shower in here and then all of the water rushes outside. It's also really nice for when you have like muddy boots and stuff like that. They can drip into the bottom and then just flush right outside. And then back here, um, this is just the door. And then in the new 2023s, this is actually clear. Um, you can't tell because all the condensation, but it's actually clear, which is really nice because then you can see out the back and everything like that. And then what's really nice is that it comes with this shade, which works as a shade and it helps keep the heat in. So at night you can just snap it up. It's the same material as the couches and stuff. So it matches really well. And then when you don't want it, you just pop it off. And then this is battery for the entire camper. This is a Yeti 1500X. It's made by Goal Zero. It is removable, so when I'm not using the camper, I can bring the battery inside. I believe it's 150 amp hours of power, which is a pretty good amount of power. It looks like a little bit like a rat's nest, and that's because it is, but that's okay. Um, I also have the GoPro and the drone charging right now, so that doesn't help. There are three ways to charge a battery, and the way that I'm doing it right now is a solar panel, so that's plugged in. I'm getting between 60 to like 110 watts of power, which is pretty good because it's kind of sunny and it's not like optimal time. The second way is through this cable right here, and that's actually charged through the truck, and that can get me about 120 watts of power. And then the third way 
is you plug in an extension cord on the outside and then you just plug in to shore power. So if you're in a camp spot, if you're at home, anything like that, you can just plug it straight into a wall and not worry about it. But it's nice that you have three different ways to charge it. And that's a tour of the camper. So now I wanna talk about a few things that I like about the camper and a few things that I don't like. Some of the things that I really like about this is one, the diesel heater. I'm honestly really surprised by how strong it is. I really like the build quality. With the very first time we've ever seen one is actually when we went to pick this up. So we were kind of going in blind. And so far we're very happy. I know some people have issues with leaking, but I really think that all of those issues have been resolved in the 2023s. I really like these bunk extensions. It adds a ton of space for when you're sleeping. I'm not a big fan of cuddling at night or being really close. I like my own space. And this really allows me to have my own space. I really like the toilet. I'm really surprised at how nice the toilet is. It was Lindsay's probably like one thing that she wanted in a camper. And for the size of the camper and just fitting inside the bed of the truck and having a toilet is really special. And I really love how well insulated and how good the construction quality is. I was expecting it to be draftier. Even when you shut the door, you can kind of feel your ears pop a little bit. So it's really, really tight and it's really, really warm. And now, unfortunately, let's talk about some of the things that I don't like. Now, first is exactly where I'm sitting. I know this is a small camper, but it's not the most comfortable place to sit. I'm a little bit bigger guy, but the way that it just like goes halfway down your leg is kind of uncomfortable for long periods of time. If you're gonna sit here for like 20, 30 minutes, that's fine. But when it's nighttime and the sun goes down really early and you spend a lot of time here, it kind of gets uncomfortable. I kind of wish this extended more. That way it comes to like the back of my legs. Now I know this camper isn't designed for what we're expecting out of it. So take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt, but I wish the battery was a little bit bigger. I feel like I've run out of power a little bit faster when we're charging computers and iPads and cameras and drones and everything like that. Now, like I said, you can only charge it from the sun, from the truck driving or from a wall outlet. But if I'm out taking photos all day and I'm not doing a lot of driving and it's really cloudy and there's no way to charge it, I kind of run into an issue. So I either have to drive the truck, let the truck sit and idle or find a way to charge it from the outside. I definitely wish there was a little bit more counter space. Now, again, it's a small camper, but I think this stove kind of takes up a bunch of space on it. On the Facebook group for Scout owners, I see that they get rid of this one and essentially buy the exact same internals that are right here, but it's like a flush mount. So what you do is you cut a hole in your countertop, drop it right in, and then that way you have a lot more countertop space which is something that I think we'll probably end up doing. Not right now, but long-term. All right, so now let's talk about some things that I wanna change. Now, a lot of what we wanna change is actually with the truck and now with the camper. I think the camper is pretty darn close to good to go as is. We might drop the stove into the countertop to add a little bit of countertop space. And then I really need to figure out the problem with the battery. Now, long-term, I might add like a complete battery system, but for now I'm happy with the goal zero. I just need to find a way to charge it up. I'm probably gonna do that with a small Honda generator that I can store right in the storage compartment. Probably like a Honda 2200i just for emergency situations that I need to charge it up. But most of the things are with the truck. So if you notice the back end is a slightly squatty. Now this is a, uh, F-350, which is considered a one-ton truck, it can completely handle this camper. It is completely within the payload. There's no issues there. So no matter what, you're gonna squat just a little bit. Now, I wanna add some airbags to the rear suspension that will level us back out, and that'll do two giant things. One is give us a little bit stiffer ride when we have the camper on, and then two, level me out so my headlights and all the sensors are where they should be. So this is a pretty big truck. I blind people with my headlights as it is. And then as you add weight to the back, it brings your headlights up a little bit. And I think I'm blinding a little bit of people. So if I bring it back up, it brings it back to exactly how it should be. And the second thing I really wanna change is I wanna get rid of these stock headlights, which are bright white. 
and when you're driving in the snow, it kind of is blinding and you can't really see. Kind of looks like you're driving in the Millennium Falcon. So I kind of want to change these out to some nice amber ones, maybe with diode dynamics or something like that, just like a nice plug and play, just to add some really nice amber so I can see the road a lot better. And then finally, I want to find a way to get rid of this and maybe get a winch system in here. I have the max tracks to get us out of a pickle, but I really think the weight of this entire thing, I might need to add a winch at some point. I would really like to find a way to add an elegant solution where I can keep this bumper and just add it in like this, which is some of the new trucks have. This truck weighs a lot. And if I get kind of in a pickle, I'm kind of limited on what things I can do. And I think just adding a winch would add a lot of peace of mind. It would allow me to get out of stuck mud and snow. We could move trees that are down in the roadway with it and I could help pe other people get out of ditches with it. So I think it'd just be a really useful addition to have to the truck. All right guys, I think that's gonna wrap this one up. I really appreciate you guys watching this. If you guys have any questions at all about the camper or the truck or us adventuring, go ahead and drop a comment. I'm more than happy to answer anything you guys might have. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more of us adventuring, go ahead and give me a subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.